Hello, my name is Dr. Christopher King, and I am an associate professor in the Department of Health Systems Administration at Georgetown University. You know, each and every day, more than 22 million people who work in the healthcare sector, we come to work with the intent to do the right thing and provide the best care to the patients we're serving. However, we live in a world in which the systems in which we operate make it pretty easy and convenient sometimes for us to make decisions and display behaviors that create very different experiences for patients based on characteristics such as their race, their ethnicity, their gender, their ability, sexual orientation, insurance status, income, and so on. When we do this and we have no idea it's happening, it's called implicit bias and it can have a harmful impact on patients' experiences. Take a look at this. You will probably notice this is a collage of only three people, but each person has a different look. And depending on how the person shows up to us, our response or our perception may be different. Some of these images may be perceived as threatening or a suspect, while others may appear less threatening and more comfortable for us. So it begs the question, how does this happen? Why does this happen? Well, our responses are shaped by our own personal experiences, as well as how certain people or groups of people have been presented to us by the broader society. This includes in movies, in the news, in social media, in magazines, and so on. And when we are constantly exposed to stereotypical trends or patterns, our brains develop pathways, makes associations, and creates shortcuts that puts individuals or groups of people in categories. Clearly, this is a problem. And the way we process this information, without even being aware of it, it can influence little things, like who we choose to sit beside in a public setting, who we make eye contact with, or even how we change our facial expressions or body language. And again, we have no idea this is happening. It's called implicit bias, also known as unconscious bias. It happens so quickly, we're just not aware that it's happening. And it begins very early. In the 1940s, psychologist Kenneth Clark and Mamie Clark designed the ever so famous doll study test. In their investigation, they presented children with a black and a white doll and asked them to select the doll that was most likely to get in trouble in school, most likely to steal, most likely to get bad grades in school. And the majority of students associated the black dolls with these negative behaviors and they associated the white dolls with more positive or good behaviors. So as this child grows up that you see on the screen, he is likely to make decisions in his life based on these biases and not realize he's doing it. So think about how he might perform as a lawyer, as a teacher, as a police officer, or even a doctor, or in our case, a healthcare professional. So that is an example of racial bias. But it's important to know that bias comes in many forms. Examples include gender, sexual orientation, and religion, just to name a few. We also observe biases based on a person's level of education, their insurance status, where they live, or even their primary language or citizenship status. These biases show up in all sectors of society. And as documented in a landmark study by the former Institute of Medicine, the book Unequal Treatment highlights how implicit bias shows up in medical settings. In fact, it's one of the leading reasons for disparities in healthcare. Biased decision-making can have a harmful impact on the quality of the patient's medical care. Sometimes diseases are misdiagnosed or pain is not effectively managed. And in some cases, members of the healthcare team change how they ask questions just based on a stereotype. And again, it's called implicit bias because they have no idea it's happening. For example, people with Medicaid and other types of public insurance have reported that providers and staff are less likely to make eye contact, more likely to brush off their concerns, more likely to think that they're lazy or just not concerned about their health and well-being. These types of experiences deepen patients' distrust of the healthcare system and is likely to push them away from obtaining important medical care. This delay in care can lead to them living with diseases or conditions that are either undetected or untreated, which can over time result in disability or premature death. That's why we recognize implicit bias as a quality issue. And it's most likely to occur when we're stressed out, when we're in a rush, when we're multitasking, or even when we have a need for closure. The good news is you can help lead the change for a better future. 
Regardless of our roles, we can all make a difference. And participating in this training is a great first step. First, we must know that bias is real. Second, we should be aware of our own biases. And third, we can develop a plan and be more intentional in our ability to counteract bias. This training includes five scenarios that address three overarching objectives. One, to identify examples of implicit bias in medical settings and their root causes. Two, to understand how implicit bias can negatively impact health outcomes. And three, to reflect on our own biases and develop strategies to overcome bias decision-making that can cause harm. It is our hope that this information will empower you to lead the change that is necessary to ensure that all people, regardless of their differences, have access to health services that respect their unique identities. This is the work that is necessary to build trust. This is the work that's necessary to promote patient engagement. This is the work that's necessary to improve the overall quality of care that our patients deserve.